Are we good? Cliff says yes. All right. Good morning. Welcome. This is the January 25th CONFAB. Uh, we have a couple of people we will be inserting and talking a little bit today, and uh, we'll have a more normal CONFAB, so we're glad to have you with us. We will rebroadcast this. It's always on our website and be rebro rebroadcasted on channel 971, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at these different times. And again, you can look at it on the website uh, at your leisure and uh, watch it. would also like to thank uh, a number of you sent pictures to Angela that are used during today's presentation. And uh, we appreciate that. Always like to get good pictures after a snowstorm. So this one is Winston, the Young's uh, new puppy. and. My wife thought it would be a good idea to get a second dog, so uh, I may have to bring that dog over here to play with Winston sometime. Um, moving on, call-in number is 6304, and going to start now, instead of Lisa, we are going to start with Ted giving an update about snow, and uh, as he's coming up here, I would just like to say thank you for Ted and the crew. Uh, the last snowstorm we had was a little different with snow and ice. And uh, we're still looking at that snow over a week later. But uh, Ted's going to come up and talk a little bit about that. And I thank Ted and the team just for all their hard work. Thanks, Ted. Good morning. Good morning. First thing I'm going to do is talk to Larry Tucker about not shoveling instead of taking pictures out there. So, and, Yes, it is. Very good picture. All right, good morning. Fun talking about the snow for a few minutes, if I could. Um, some people ask us what direction we take and how and when. Just want to kind of clear a few things up. Um, you've seen the guys come in middle of the night, working throughout the night. They're keeping the main thoroughfares clear, um, loading docks, entrances, entrances to the main buildings and things like that for emergency vehicles and the docks for supplies. And then right behind that, of course, is the uh, employee lots because they have to get in and out. And um, so we have to get those cleaned up and keep those clean 24 hours a day. Along with the, the employee lot, you see that, which is now the B lot, uh, we get that cleaned off right away because it does affect, it melts and stuff and gets into the employee lot at this point. Once that snow was completed, we hit the employee lot hard again to get all the cars cleaned off, all the snow in between the vehicles. Because if we don't do that, what happens is it thaws out, freezes up. We got problems the next morning, so and that kind of thing. So we try to take care of that as fast as we can. Once we get that under control, you'll see we normally move to the cottages. Um, reason being there is the cottages, people need to come to the building to take care of things, meals, etc. So we try to get their access to the building as quick as we can. And then from there, we start waving out to the other lots, you know, C lots, uh, upper lot, C lower lot, things like that, kind of get cleaned up. We were asked a couple of times in this last snow why we spend so much time going through every vehicle and getting them all cleaned off. That's kind of one of my little things we like to have done because a couple of reasons. If my parents lived here, I wouldn't want them out there cleaning their own vehicles off. And number two, it is a lot of work for us right from the start, but it actually saves us a lot of work, um, time and material as far as out ice melt, things like that, because like I mentioned before, it's gonna thaw out and freeze back up, be problems, um, for it's a safety issue as well. That's how we handle all that, get everything cleaned off and um, keep us from having to do so much labor going forward from that. I'd like to take a minute and talk about snow safety. Um, for all those who do a lot of walking, it's a big thing to walk out in the snow. I get it. Uh, me, I'm kind of tired of it by that time, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but if you would do us a huge favor and yourself, please be careful. Uh, we had a few close calls just go around with some folks walking in the parking lot while we were running our trucks and tractors. They make a lot of noise. We got a lot of fast moving parts in that area. So if you could be for your safety, if we are walk, if we are clearing out a parking lot that you are ready to come through, if you can kind of go around that or at the very least make eye contact with the operators, just like if you were driving, 
Um, so just keep an eye on things um, and then um, just be safe for everyone. One of the problems we had this last two snows, it was very cold right after that. So we had icy conditions that we normally don't deal with too much, but this time around we had wait to later in the day to get started. So we had a lot of ice in the morning, still a lot of walkers. Um, if you're gonna go out walking in the morning or at night, let someone know, please. Even if you drop by the front desk and say, hey, I'm going out for a while, and then give them a call, drop back when you're, drop by when you're back in the building so we know everything is okay. Um, so this time around, it was a tough snow, more ice than we had to deal with. So I'm just putting that out there a little bit. Anyway, um, I do want to finish up with, we hadn't met since Christmas. So from, on behalf of our department, thank you very much for your generous gift. Uh, they want to make sure I mention that today to y'all. And um, I think that's all I have for right now, unless we have any questions. Yes, sir. The light from the Woodbridge parking lot up to the employees parking lot mm -hmm. didn't work. They don't work at all right now? One work. Okay. Okay. That's been gone. There are no lights up to the other parking lot. Okay, we'll check that out. The comment was about there's no lights on the stairwell between the Woods Edge parking area and the employee parking area. We do have those on motion, motion solar lights. All and we of them work, but the other ones okay. All right, we will check those out. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Thank you. Good morning. I just have a few items from the Resident Life Office. Um, firstly, we are in the process of replacing three of our outdated treadmills in the gym. And Denise just told me that um, some of them have arrived at um, the place we're purchasing them from and we're waiting on a couple of others. Also, um, we ordered new chairs um, for the Resident Business Center, so we should be getting them in the next week or so. A group of residents and fellow educators met on initiating um, Westminster Canterbury University, and there were about 35 to 40 residents in attendance. We kicked off with the course being taught by Dr. Neil Summerlin, and next, um, resident Greg Hagen will be teaching our second course. So if you would like to be added to the email listing for related communications, please let Susan know. Um, we have also, we've purchased software called Dakin Brain. I talked about this a little bit last month, and this is for Cognition Health. And Katrina will be working with their team to get this installed in our resident business center. Um, by the end of this week, or um, the beginning of next, it depends uh, when this happens, we will be getting the updated resident directory to you and your in-house mailboxes. Um, and then lastly, some of you may have seen this on the news last night or this morning, but there was a grandmother, um, I think in New York, and she was um, being scammed into providing cash for her grandson who was supposedly in jail. Um, and she called the police and the police arrived um, to her residence ahead of time. And when the gentleman came to get the cash, the police were there to surprise him. So that was just a good reminder um, to just make everyone be aware that we do see these scams here. And the resident was recently taken advantage of in a very similar way. And um, some of you have maybe gotten these emails from supposedly your neighbor that um, they need help or family needs help. So just be aware that um, this is happening more and more via email and telephone. So be on guard. Any questions for me today? Thank you. Lisa. Good morning. 
Okay, first I'd like to start with um, resident Smokey Watts, who I'm scanning. I don't see him here. Um, but he is going to teach a watercolor class uh, beginning next Tuesday, February 1st. I can't believe it's February already. Um, that will start February 1st and end on Tuesday, March 8th, and that goes from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in the activities and programs room. Did we have the pictures? Okay, all right. Please join us in the Commons on Friday, February 4th at 8 p.m. to watch the 2022 Winter Olympics opening ceremonies on the big screen. The Olympics are scheduled to take place from February 4th through February 20th in Beijing and venues nearing neighborhoods, towns, and in the People's Republic of China. For the first time, the Winter Olympics will be hosted by a city that previously hosted the Summer Olympics. The opening ceremonies can also be seen on NBC. Diane Wooldridge, a Mary Kay Cosmetics representative, will be here on Monday, February 7th from 1 to 2 p.m. in the Activities and Programs room. Diane accepts checks, cash, and major credit cards. Join us on Tuesday, February 8th at 7 p.m. in the Commons for the documentary, The Vanishing Lions. This compelling program features lion experts, farmers, and Masa herdsmen that explore solutions to the problems of saving lions and living with them. Join us on Sunday, February 13th in the Commons at 6 p.m. for Super Bowl 56. The game will be played in SoFi Stadium, an unprecedented and unparalleled sports and entertainment destination built in Inglewood, California. You are welcome to bring your own snacks and drinks to cheer your favorite team on. Social Hour is scheduled for Friday, February 18th at 4 p.m. in the Commons with the Last Chance Band featuring Dave Beasley and Becky Grandi. Becky and Dave met in high school in Christiansburg in the late 60s and performed together on and off for several years. Then Dave and Becky went their separate ways and toured all over the country. They then joined up again just one year ago to start performing a very original act. They will be playing many of your favorites in a one-of-a-kind performance that you don't want to miss. So if any of you here were at the New Year's Eve party, you got to see the Last Chance Band in person. So Mr. Minonia had asked them after the party was over if they would like to come back for social hours, so they will be here in February. So I'm sure it'll be a great show. On Sunday, February 20th at 8 p.m., you can watch the closing ceremonies for the Winter Olympics on the big screen. The ceremonial closing of international sporting event will include closing speeches, the parade of athletes, and the handover of the Olympic flag with an artistic spectacle to showcase the culture and history of China and France, who will be the next host nation. On Monday, February 21st at 7 p.m., Kate and Leopold starting Meg Ryan and Hugh Jackman will be shown in the Commons. Kate and Leopold is a romantic comedy film that tells a story of a physicist by the name of Stuart who accidentally pulls his great-great-grandfather, Leopold, through a time portal from the 19th century New York to the present. Here, Leopold falls in love with Kate. The movie runs about 118 minutes. Sing Along is scheduled for Thursday, February 24th at 7 p.m. in the Commons. And some upcoming trips for February are weekly grocery, shopping at Kohl's and Target, and I just found out today that we needed to change that date for Target and Kohl's from February 4th to February 11th. The Jefferson Choral Society presents Beatles Rewind on Sunday, February 13th. Lunch Bunch to Isabella's Restaurant, Tuesday, February 15th. 
First Presbyterian Fine Art Series presents King's Singers Friday, February 25th, and the Academy presents Masters of Illusions on Saturday, February 26th. So for more detailed information and other programs, please see your weekly and monthly newsletters, TV 970, and the resident update. And we do have some pictures, speaking of New Year's Eve party, um, of the great, wonderful time we all had. It was very special to be there. We had lots of good food, lots of fun, and as you can see, lots of dancing and smiling faces. So. Hopefully our next party coming up will be just as fun as this one. And we had a conga line, so um, it was just wonderful. And thank you again to everybody that um, came to the party. And I would also like to follow Ted's words and thank you all for our amazing, amazing Christmas gift. So thank you, everybody, and I hope you have a good day. Good morning. I want to start out with the wellness resident of the month. It's Susan Wyatt. So be sure to congratulate Susan when you see her and um, see her information on the display board in the wellness center. Uh, one thing with Susan, one reason she is a uh, wellness resident of the month and getting ready to talk about the cyber cycle. Um, Susan worked on the cyber cycle a lot last year. She did 2,952 miles in 11 hours in 2021. She ranked number one for the WC Cyber Cycle uh, team and number four out of all of the riders in the country. So be sure and congratulate her with that. In saying that, we have 2022 uh, challenges starting up, started in January. So I encourage you to come into the fitness center and ride the cyber cycle. If you want to join one or all of those challenges, you are able to. Uh, you just register when you're on the cyber cycle. You register and join, and you can start the challenges. So we also have the Parkinson Support Group in February on Tuesday, February 15th at 2 p.m., um, that location is located in the Big Lot Shopping Center off of Timberlake Road at Calvary Church. Um, we did cancel January's, but trying to, and hopefully we'll be able to have the February support group. The Soulmates Walk is Percival Island for February. Um, so pick up your Soulmates um, schedule towards the end of this week. I had to pull those. I had them out, but I needed to change one of them, and I'm waiting for a call back on one of our locations. Uh, so those should be back out at the end of the, or by the end of this week. The YMCA specialty classes that we partner with the Y with are the Diabetes Prevention, the Rock Steady Boxing, and also Live Strong. If you are interested in those or want any information on those or would like to join those, uh, be sure and get with me. You can contact me at extension 3416 or come by and see me, and I'll be happy to give you any more information on that that you would like. Reach for the Stars is something that we're going to have through February and March. Um, for all classes that you take with our Wellness Center, um, you will get a star. This includes coming into the fitness center. If you have not set up a program in the fitness center and would like to get started in the fitness center, if you meet with Kim, she will set up a program. You will get a star for that as well. So I encourage you to try different classes that, than you've been doing as well as the ones that you've been doing. We also have Geo Motion going on for six weeks, and we will have a new class coming in in March um, in the pool area. So I encourage you to try the new classes as well and keep reaching for the stars because that'll be through those two months. Wellness lectures in February are What is New with AlphaGal with Dr. Jeffrey Wilson and also Healthy Living for Your Brain and Body with Allison Zuba. Keeping on Track is a weight management discussion group that we're starting in February. I've had some interest in, um, in accountability and uh, just getting started and getting going or keeping on track 
uh, with different ones. It's not a weight program. If you're on a weight program, this is also for you, so it's for everyone. It's really a discussion, um, a group discussion of bringing in new and different things that might work for others and just have a discussion among yourselves and to encourage each other and um, just maintaining and that type of thing. So if you're interested in anything like that, please join us. We have two dates in February. Um, they're on Monday, February 14th, and February 28th. So we hope to see you. They will be in the Hume Room. And a reminder of classes and programs that we already have, I'd just like to bring that up since we're starting the new year. For anyone who may want to come into something new and, and that you haven't tried is line dancing and dancing with Parkinson's. We have that every week. We have pool volleyball twice a month. We also have massage weekly and also pickleball every week. So if you haven't tried those, um, come and try them. And if you've been playing, I hope you keep on and everything you're doing. If you join the challenges that we began in January, which run through June, be sure to turn in your monthly form with your mileage um, into Kim or I, either one. And we like to get those at the end of each month and keep record of that for you. If you have any questions on that, let me know. The lecture with Dr. Peter Betts, Maintaining Your Mental Health During the Pandemic, um, we had that recorded, and we are showing that on Channel 971 on Mondays, January 24th and 31st, and February 7th and 14th. We also have that on the resident website, if you were unable to make it or if you want to see that again. Um, one thing in the Templeton Wellness Center, we do ask that everyone wear your mask to the wellness center in each area. Uh, you do not have to wear it if you do not want to during exercise, but once you finish exercise, we do ask that you put your mask back on. And those are for those who are fully vaccinated. Uh, for those who are not fully vaccinated, um, we do ask that you please wear your mask at all times, and we appreciate you doing so. And we are continuing uh, practicing social distancing. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, you can see all of our information on, in the newsletters, both monthly and weekly, on Channel 971 and also on the resident's website. Thank you, and have a good day. And I also thank you for our Christmas party and gifts very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Debbie Callahan here, Vice President for Marketing and Development. Um, I always listen to Denise and think of all the wonderful things that you all get to do, and I wish I could join you. <laughs> but we aren't there yet, so maybe in the future. But uh, if you've been like me, I've been a slug, so I haven't been doing a whole lot. But that's not why I'm here. I, I'm here to share with you uh, some news from the Westminster Canterbury Foundation. Uh, we did have our annual meeting just yesterday, and uh, we're very pleased to welcome four new members to the Foundation Board of Directors. We have uh, two residents who have joined us. One is Sam Cardwell. The other is uh, Dave Young. Both of those are new directors, and they started their terms yesterday. We have also asked and uh, been accepted for membership are Tommy Battle, who, whose name you may recognize and may even know. He is the former head of school. Uh, for VES, just, just up the street here, our neighbors. He is now uh, working with um, a business called um, Financial Designs. Thank you, Sean. I was going to say Capital Designs. I'm going, no, that's not correct. Uh, I believe he's uh, the president for that particular organization. And our fourth member is Jack McCarthy. Jack is uh, a team member with Boxley, and as you might suspect, he is also Langer McCarthy's son. So we're very pleased to have the four of them uh, joining our board and looking forward to a great year for 2022 and supporting all the residents and activities here at Westminster Canterbury with our fundraising. Uh, just one final note to leave with you, and this is always the best part of my report, at least the part that I enjoy the most, is to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We had a wonderful response to our fellowship appeal uh, we had so many donors who responded, and we really appreciate every single gift and every single one of you. We were able to raise $157,354 to support our fellowship. 
And fellowship, as you'll remember, is that fund that supports residents who, through no fault of their own, may fall on hard times, financial difficulty. They may have had uh, some event in their life where their finances are no longer able to support them, or maybe they've just outlived their resources. And that's what fellowship is for. So thank you again. We truly appreciate all your support and look forward to uh, working with you in the new year. Thank you so much. One of these days, one of these days, I won't have to come up here, and we hope that's uh, sooner rather than later. One of the, we're watching a couple of different data sets. One of the really important ones is our 14-day average of new cases in the Central Health District. We've got three mountain peaks uh, in it. <coughs> one is. Uh, uh, it was in January, we were at 282 new cases per day. Uh, one was in October, when we were at 283 cases per day. And then more recently, on January 21st, on my birthday, we had our third peak, and, and the highest of all of them. So, hooray for Greg, he had the highest peak. He had the big <laughs> peak here. We were hoping that it would drop as fast as some of the others have. Uh, the number I have up on the, uh, the screen, the 435 uh, was the peak, and then the, uh, whoops, the 404.6 was last Friday. As of this morning, I was hoping it would have dropped. It was 408. So it was just not dropping the way we uh, would like it to, but hope it does uh, drop. Uh, as swiftly as some of the other data seem to be around the world. <coughs> the same data set, but just looking at it for a shorter time period so we can see what the shape of the, of the, the curve is as far as the daily, daily data. And we're averaging, uh, as I said, 405 uh, cases per day. The other thing that we're worried about is the positivity rate. And that is, what is the percentage of new cases coming out of the uh, testing that's done in, in Lynchburg? The one number is real hard to read, so it would make it a little bit bigger. This is our positivity rate as of, as of Friday, 40.32%. This is not good. Not good at all. The 10% uh, the uh, level, which is shown on the other chart by the uh, straight line, is way down, way down here. And we had hoped that this number would start <laughs> dropping, but uh, as of this morning, the 40.32 is, instead of a lower number, is up a little bit at 40.6. So it's just staying the same. So we're just not dropping the way we should. I've looked at the positivity rates of all, this is just for Lynchburg, I've looked at the positivity rates of the other counties around us, and all of them are actually a little bit higher than we are. So we're really, really not in a, in a, good, in a good shape at all. <coughs> Vaccination, this is really the most, uh, in, in a sense, the most distressing of all of the uh, data sets that we get. <coughs> it's been barely, barely increasing. Uh, those numbers are, almost identical to what we had last month. The uh, fully vaccinated uh, is, is slightly before, below 49%. It almost looks like it's, the curve is going to be asymptotic to uh, 50% or, or stay constant 50%. And this means simply looking long-term, short-term and long-term, 50% of the population in our health district appears determined to not get vaccinated. And I don't want to go into uh, hypothesizing what this might mean for the future, 
but if, if half of the population doesn't want to get, doesn't believe they need vaccinations, this is not good. Any comments, any questions? Thank you. And Greg, thank you for sharing these data points. I really appreciate it. Uh, we had sent a memo out a couple of weeks ago, I guess two weeks ago now, that we were going back to masks and said we would watch it for three weeks. At this point in time, we don't have plans to back off of the mask mandate for everyone in public spaces. So um, we're going to keep doing that for the time being. And uh, I track these numbers as well. As we watch them go back down, we will then make a decision uh, uh, just getting through uh, what is a tough time as these numbers are very high everywhere. So I appreciate your understanding with that. I'm going to ask Ashley Jordan, our Director of Nursing, to come up and just talk a little bit about testing. Uh, there are some different questions on that. and would also ask you if you have any questions while Ashley's up here, please feel free to raise your hand. Lisa has a microphone and go ahead and ask away. Ashley. Good morning. Um, as Greg was saying, the numbers are extremely high. Um, I was just saying the other day that I remembered when we were scared when our percentage got above 10%. And um, now I would hope for us to be at 10% again because um, our numbers are truly high. And we see that in the community and we also see that here at Westminster. Um, with that being said, I want to talk a little about COVID testing. So as far as independent living residents go, um, if you are exposed to someone who has tested positive for COVID or you have symptoms of COVID, please call the clinic and we will make sure that you get tested. Um, we are supplied some test kits from the government. Um, those test kits come in. They used to come in a lot more frequently than they do now. Um, they don't come in as much now. And those test kits we're only allowed to use for staff. So we do have, we have purchased some test kits to use for you guys and for the residents. Um, so there is a fee that goes along with that. And you may see that on your bill. Um, it is a $30 fee for the test and the administration. Um, please just let us know if you were exposed or you developed symptoms. We recommend that you call the clinic instead of going down there just to prevent from exposing anyone else on the way, just in case. Um, as everyone's gonna say, Sean's gonna talk more about COVID and the numbers on campus. Um, when he comes up, but please continue to wear your masks. Please be careful in large gatherings. Um, wash your hands. We, our numbers are really high right now here, but in the big scheme of things, we've still done really well as a company and at Westminster, and I hope we can continue to do that. And we, we have the opportunity to order masks from the government, so that, should we do that? Yes, yeah, so I think the masks, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, I believe what I read about the masks is that you would have to go pick them up at like a CVS or a place like that. I know the test kits you can order from the government, and I do recommend you doing that. I don't think that hurts anyone to get the test kits, and um, I did it myself just to have some at home. Um, so I think you should use that link. The masks, I don't, and tell me if I'm wrong, I thought I read that you had to pick them up from like a CVS or a certain place, but they're not quite available yet. And I think Sean may have more information on that. I'll stick around if y'all have more questions after Sean talks. I want to thank Ashley. Um, there's a lot of people here that have been doing a lot of good things. When people try to give me credit for any of this in the last two years, um, it's not me, it's all of us. But uh, when it comes to our staff, Ashley has been the leader now for two years uh, of going through all of our protocols and, and everything we do. And uh, I appreciate all she's done. Um, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes, questions and, and education that uh, is mind boggling. So thank you to Ashley. Thank you for the, all of you and uh, for our staff that continue to pick up extra shifts and things like that. Um, I will hit a number of different numbers and try to hit a lot of different parts of COVID and some other things going around campus. Uh, when we do have infections, we are trying to share that with you uh, as much as we can. 
Um, what we are going to stop doing is filling the boxes up when there's a staff member or two that we have. Um, unless they are directly involved over here in independent living, we will just send out the emails with that. But we're not going to stuff boxes because we are seeing such a high frequency of staff testing positive. Um, when staff do test positive, we are making everyone in those areas aware. So if there's one staff member positive in health care, everybody who lives in health care uh, gets a notice for that. The families in there get a notice for that. But um, using 210 pieces of paper to tell you that someone has tested positive this afternoon, we will try to do that by email. And I know not everyone has email, but um, it's a lot of paper right now. Um, we also post on our website anytime there is a positive, uh, whether that's staff or residents. And also, we will put in paper anytime a resident has tested positive, regardless of whether that person is in independent assisted living memory support or health care. I cover most of that right, Debbie? So you're always going to get an email, uh, paper sometimes, but not all the time, uh, just trying to save a tree or two. Um, COVID numbers, so looking, went back to January the 12th, and we had 19 staff members test positive, seven residents test positive. Of those residents, one was memory support, four were in assisted living, and two were in independent living. As of today, the 25th of January, there is only one person in memory support who remains positive and in isolation protocol right now. So. All those uh, folks in assisted living have been released. Uh, if you were going uh, back and forth to therapy or over to health care and we were asking you to go outside, you can now go back down through the third floor again. We um, Visitation also, as you'll notice, has stayed open. Um, want you to be very cautious. Visitation in health care is open because we are told it has to stay open. Um, visitation and memory support uh, is open, but would ask if you're going in there. There are very short visits. Um, it's, you know, it's a place where obviously there are cases, a case of COVID. So um, we're glad for most parts of this that we stay open, but also there is risk in going in there. But uh, again, a lot of people want to get into healthcare, go see their friend, family, uh, masks start kind of coming off down off the nose, maybe off the mouth. And at this point in time, I'm sorry, we need to ask everyone just to continue those protocols of keeping the mask on. If you're going into an area that does have uh, sick people in it, uh, please make those visits short. We want to keep those visits going, but we want it done safely. 95% um, of our staff are vaccinated. That number will probably inch up a little more. We are going to have about 20 to 22 staff members that have either a religious or a medical exemption. We've been working through that and still working through some of those details this morning. Uh, there are going to be an additional couple layers of precaution that those folks will have, um, but we will be honoring those religious, most med religious and medical exemptions. Uh, want to comment on uh, the question that Greg asked about N95 masks and at least what I have read at this point is that whether it's Walgreens, CVS or another pharmacy that you will in the future be able to go get masks from there, uh, but they're not there now. When we know of pharmacies that start having these in inventory, we will send out messaging, both paper and emails to you so you know where you can try to go find those. Uh, I could imagine there'll be a big run on those though. Yes. True Value has those masks, but I think they are charging for those masks. Yeah, they, right. They, like five, you know, $10. So True Value has masks that you can buy and purchase of an N95, but the government will have, uh, these pharmacies will have free masks for people coming in, in the near future from what they're saying. Thank you. Uh, for oh, those Sean, who, yes. I was really asking about the test kits that are available so, from the government, the free ones. Right. Next bullet point. Uh, we sent out an email last week, um, and I think it was also in paper, uh, a notice that there is a link for the four free tests that are supposed to be coming uh, in conjunction with the United States Postal Service. 
and those test kits uh, are free to everyone to your address and um, I've done it I did it for my mother uh, it's a pretty quick and easy uh, process to do if you want to see that again please contact Angela at 3506 and we can get that link to you uh, I think it is also on the resident website or if not we can try to get it up it was up uh, last week but is not up there but we'll try to get that back up again um, and use that website for links as well as information with uh, the mask so both two things happening the ma the four free tests you can order now uh, I think I ordered uh, the day or the day before technically it was supposed to open and have not seen anything. You're supposed to also get emails uh, and have not had anything that has told me when they're coming, but uh, I'd assume that'll come pretty quickly. Could we, uh, could we just order them and then donate them to the clinic? Uh, that would be great. If you order four and you want to donate to the clinic, we'd love to ha accept those, so thank you. John, that's one per address yes and that's, that's the problem people think that they oh I can order them and my wife can order them but no correct one per address and uh, for those of you that are in the main building there is a slot for your you know address as well as the apartment number so uh, thank you Uh, Paul said to tell you that our medical deduction letters, he is in the process of working with those. We'll have to have those certified by the auditors, but hopes to have those out by the end of the month. I know that is equally as important to a lot of you uh, and very important. Uh, we've shared before that we will be leaving Sodexo here uh, towards mid-March, and in doing so, uh, one of the important pieces there was Brian Brust, our chef, and I'm happy to share that we are just about done with all the details in uh, working with Sodexo uh, because he was not able to work with the, uh, us for one year. We are going to have that waived and working out the final details. But Brian Brust will become a Westminster Canterbury employee here probably sometime if it's not February by March. And then again, we will transition away from the management services with Sodexo in March going into April. Again, I'll mention it, I uh, said earlier, the mask mandate will stay in place over the next few weeks. We'll let you know more. Um, I know there have been some folks that have been concerned because of different card games or different things you do getting together. Uh, we have not put any uh, bans on getting together for cards and being together. We have just said when you're in public spaces, we would like you to wear a mask. So uh, however you do that, um, you, it is up to you, but there are no bans on card games or different gatherings like that. Um, I know dining had a wine tasting reception that we were able to spread out, and uh, we'll continue to try to do things like that when we can safely do it. Uh, I realize, too, we had some events right before the mask mandate came out on the bridge, and I don't want to have large groups to where some of us that pass through don't want to be around large groups have to pass through social gatherings. So we're still trying to have social gatherings safely uh, out of the way of traffic spaces and things like that. We're going to try to keep our dining spaces open and uh, continue doing that as long as these numbers internally stay where they are. So I appreciate again how safe you are being with all that. I've seen signs up for it, but the ACC network is on Comcast finally. I think that took almost two years and a number of us changing over to things like YouTube TV and other things, but uh, I don't know the exact number on your uh, Comcast, but I just saw that and thought that need to share that for those of you who like watching ACC basketball. Sorry. One more time. The number is 1325 ACC you. channel and Comcast 1325 not that the ACC has been good to watch recently but there are that's all teams involved just about so except Fran and Duke so all right uh, lastly construction update so because of having COVID in the assisted living areas we put a pause for almost uh, 10 days and hope uh, we are going through our testing again, just protocol for testing everyone in assisted living, but assuming they clear in the next 
24 to 36 hours, we will resume our construction and renovations in the fourth and third floors of memory, uh, sorry, of assisted living. That is in the Harside building. And then work continues and has not stopped over in Riverside. So once we opened up dining a couple of weeks ago for the wood dining room, we are able to start really working on demolition in the fourth floor of the Riverside building. And then again, in the fifth floor, you're seeing a lot of the metal studs being placed, um, walls starting to go up, wires being pulled for electricity. Uh, they'll start doing a lot more work with um, the domestic water lines and uh, a lot of the infrastructure upstairs on that Riverside building. So that is all moving in the right direction. I think at this point in time, uh, that covers most of what I plan to report on. I'll open the floor for any questions. And if you'll wait, we'll try to get Lisa to run around with the microphone. We'll start back here. As far as, as, far as construction is concerned, the, the work on the parking lot out there seems to be somewhat sporadic. Do you know anything about the reasoning for that? Uh, questions on how sporadic the parking lot is, I don't have an answer for you. Look back at Ted, and I'm not sure. Snow, Ted is, Ted is saying snow and cold, frozen weather at this point right now. And we will try to have Sean and or Lauren here as guest speakers next CONFAB as well. Uh, I wanted to ask more about social distancing. Do we have to continue that after this week is over, after this three weeks is over? Like if I want to eat in my regular dining group, I haven't been doing it because there are six people at the table? So um, we try to give recommendations. And social distancing, I think, is very important with mask wearing. Uh, we say when you're going to eat a meal, uh, you can take your mask off, and we have tried to spread tables out a little more in the James River. Um, if you want to eat with your friends, I think we have seen here that we have a highly vaccinated population, uh, and there are a number of people doing that and consistently do it and have been fine doing it. I can't stand up here and guarantee anyone that your dinner tonight's going to be perfect and you're going to wake up tomorrow and not have COVID. Um, we, we, if we get to a point where we feel like it's a concern that we need to put more things back up like plexiglass and space tables out more, we will do that. But right now at this point in time, we are seeing people eat together. Now, all of us are in different places of our concern and how we go about our day and our living. Um, if you feel comfortable eating with Greg and Sean today, great. If you're scared because Sean has college eight, I'm, I'm sorry. Is that safe to do that? If there are like there are six or seven at the table I usually eat at, but I haven't been doing it because I thought we were, you know, supposed to be six feet apart. I'm going to tell you six or seven is a lot of people eat a meal with. And you need to look around the table and see if the people around you are folks that are out and about with grandchildren a lot, uh, maybe with school-aged kids, things like that. I, I can't answer for you. I'd say six or seven is a pretty big group to eat with. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, I'd look for a four-top um, or do what, what is comfortable. We are trying uh, to not go back to where we were one year ago, where we shut dining rooms and everything down. Uh, as we watch the numbers, we are concerned, but uh, we are holding up pretty well here right now. So again, the, the, to me, the decision on eating with six people, uh, we, I believe there's at least one table that is spread out that could probably fit 10 to 12 people there. Whether your group would like to sit at that table that are probably three, four tops connected is probably a safer venue than having seven people get around a round top. We're not going to come stop you and, and say, Angelo, you pulled the chair up to the table and you're the seventh. You've got to leave. At least I hope we're not doing that at this point. But there needs to be caution and comfort. And, and again, knowing the people that you are eating with uh, as to what their habits are. Uh, I, I get comments from family members or friends. I saw such and such that lives at Westminster Canterbury at Kroger walking around without a mask on. Um, I don't go to Kroger because I don't want to see you walk around without a mask. I like the MVP buys at Food Lion, but um, I, I can't 
be on top of everybody at all times. And we, when we see numbers start going the wrong way, we will take more precautions for meals. I wish I could, there, there, this isn't a yes or no answer, and I'm sorry, but it's based on your comfort level of how you want to live the next couple of weeks and months, as it has always been a, a trying to make this a personal choice as we go through to keep things open as much as we can, have you all be together, but do it safely. It's a good question, and it's a, it's a I, I'm sorry, I can't give you a certainty on this one. Other questions? An easier one? I appreciate everyone's time. I do appreciate, again, how safe all of you have been. Um, as Ashley has said, um, you were doing very well, and we appreciate that. And with our staff, we continue to try to keep them as safe as possible. We've got one more back here. I'd just like to thank Sean, you and your staff for the leadership for these past two years, which have been awful for you and your family, as we know, and also for the staff and their family. We thank you for what you've done to keep us safe here. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. And again, as I tell people, it's, it's everyone. Uh, we all have a responsibility to this. And, um, you know, there are people like Ashley and others that are, are stepping up and doing a lot more, but it, this really is... Uh, we're no good, uh, you know, we're no better than our weakest link with this. And uh, your, your being careful and safe is incredibly important. I thank you. Let's keep it up. You know, I'm hoping these numbers that Greg is showing us, we're seeing the tip of it, and we'll start seeing it flatten out and run back down in a hurry is our hope. So thank you all, and have a good day.